So what we did was create a program that would draw rectangles, I believe. I'm not seeing that here. Did we do a program that would draw rectangles? I think we did spiral. We did spiral. All right. Well, then, we can do the program to draw rectangles anyways. No biggie. So the idea behind this one is, uh, you know that we've written it, you know, code that would draw a rectangle or, you know, code that would draw a spiral, but it took like four lines of code or six lines of code or eight lines of code in order to do that. We're going to make a procedure so that you can invoke draw a rectangle. The turtle will move over to that place, specify the XY coordinates, and then draw a rectangle of that width and that height. And also we're going to do a circle one. The circle one's actually, you know, a little bit fewer lines of code. It's a little easier to do. So maybe that'll be the one that we concentrate on. And the idea is so that you can draw a circle with just one line of code. It'll reposition itself. It'll draw the circle. It'll fill it in all with one line of code rather than the several lines of code that we, we've been doing before. And that's kind of the power of writing your own function, writing your own procedures. Sometimes I mix those two terms up. Writing your own functions, you can encapsulate code so that you can invoke one function and it'll do a bunch of stuff. And that kind of the difference between, you know, you having to go to uh, mow your lawn. What are the steps for you to mow your lawn? You know, one, go to shed, two, get lawnmower, three, start lawnmower, four, mow lawn, five, put lawnmower back in shed, six, lock shed. Okay, we had six steps there. A lot easier just to, you know, call the gardener and say, mow lawn, hang up. You know, one command in order to do it rather than the six. So you may as well crank idle up. All right, let's implement the circle one first because it's fewer lines of code. It's slightly less confusing. The uh, circle one relies on nothing that we haven't seen before. So I'm going to do file new, do a save as, don't save it to your Python directory. I always say that, but I always will. Let's uh, save mine to the desktop inside the fundamentals directory. This is going to be draw circ. Don't think I have one named that yet. Okay, so at the top of it, we have to import the libraries that we're going to use. In this case, there's only one of them, Turtle. Now remember, you can write code that you could import yourself. It's not like these uh, libraries that we import are magical. If you write something full of functions, you could import it inside another program. Then we have to create our Turtle. Notice that there's a small T there and a capital T on the second turtle, and it's followed by parentheses, which means this is actually a function call right there. And what does that do? It opens the screen that the turtle's going to be on, and it resets all the variables so that the turtle's going to start drawing in the middle of the screen. Now let's make it go at a reasonable speed, t.speed5. Let's make it have a reasonable thickness, t.width. Something really nice and visible, three pixel wide lines. 
Now the reason we're doing this before we add our functions is so that these, that this variable, this turtle, could be used by all of the functions that we write. There are other ways we could handle that. We could pass that turtle into every function that we use. <coughs> but this is what's known, in effect, as a global variable. It's globally available to every function in this file, or at least every function that's defined below it. And global variables may not be the best idea. Okay, so the first thing we're going to write is a relocate function. And what the relocate function is going to do is you pass it an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. It lifts the pin up so it doesn't leave a trail. And then it's going to call set x to go to the right place. And then it's going to call set y to go to the right place. And then it's going to put its pin back down. So that way we can relocate the cursor without leaving a trail. The way you define a function is with the DEF keyword. Then you have a name for it. That's a name that you pick. And then you put parentheses, and if you're passing any data into the function, you put that between the parentheses, and then you always use a colon to start your code block. All right, so we're going to lift the turtle's pin, pin up. Then we're going to set our x position to the value x that was passed in. Then we're going to set our y position to the y position that was passed in, just like xy coordinates and, you know, junior high geometry or whatever. And although this isn't strictly necessary, I'm going to do it anyway. Set heading 90. Now, in the turtle system, you know, in our system, due north is 0 degrees. But in turtles, 0 is that way for some reason. So we're going to set it to 90 so that it, the turtle would start by drawing straight up. Maybe a relocate function shouldn't change the orientation of the turtle, but I think it made for easier code if it did. And then after we've relocated ourselves, we put the pin back down. And we're doing all that so we don't leave a path. And we can add a return statement just to mark that that is the end of the function. You don't necessarily need to do that because as soon as you stop indenting, it returns, but I like seeing that return. It very clearly denotes that that function is done. Okay, now if I save this, it's not going to do anything. It's, well, it will create the turtle, but it doesn't relocate it. Why? Because we never call the function. All we've done is define it. It's like writing a grocery list. We, we wrote a list of steps here, but until you actually give the list to somebody and tell them to go do it, nothing happens. Okay, so now we're going to create a new one called draw circle. We're going to pass in an x coordinate, a y coordinate, a radius, a color, and a fill color. That way we can have the edge of the circle be a different color than the, out, than the inside of the circle. So whenever we call this function, we're going to have to pass in all those variables. Now, what's the very first thing we want to do? Relocate ourselves. T dot relocate to the x, y coordinate specified. Then let's set our color. T dot color. I'm going to add some spaces, make this clear. Color comma fill color. Because the T dot color function takes either one parameter or two parameters. If you only pass in one color, it's the color of the line. But if you pass in two colors, the second color is the color that you fill with. So we've relocated. We've set our cursor. We want to begin our fill, meaning that anything we draw after this we can, will be filled with the, the uh, fill color. Begin underscore fill. Now we want to draw our circle. T dot circle of the specified radius. And then lastly, t dot end fill. And then return for a good measure. All right, again, all I've done is define the function. 
I didn't invoke it. So it doesn't do anything, you know. It created a turtle because that's not part of a function. It's just part of the code. But, you know, we created a series of steps, but nothing is actually doing it. We haven't called the gardener and told him to mow the lawn. So now let's make a main method. Not strictly necessary, but this is kind of good programming style. And the reason you want to... Never mind. We're going to make a main method. So since we have all this stuff here, in order to draw a circle, all we have to do is call draw circle. I can't spell it for some reason. Let me scroll it up. Sorry, guys. I see people standing up to read it. There we go. And if I could make the font one notch larger, I would. I should mess, mess with the resolution, see if I can get the fonts larger. Anyways, draw a circle. Now let's set a position for it. Let's try coordinate 0, 100. I want to draw a circle that's 50 pixels wide with a radius of 50 pixels. I want it to be a red circle filled with yellow. So it's going to move to that coordinate, 0, 100. It's going to issue the commands to do that moving without leaving a trail. <laughs> it's going to set the color to the specified colors, and then it's going to draw a circle of that specified radius. I think I'll run it now, make sure it all works. Whoops, it's still not going to work because I'm not calling main. So the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke main. I'm going to put a return statement here after that draw circle too. And it blew up, so I've got a mistake in here. T dot relocate. My mistake. Relocate is a function we made, not a function that, that's part of the turtle library. So we don't call T dot relocate. Take off the T dot in front of the word relocate. I put a comment there to make it real easy to know that that's what we need to do. All right. I feel like adding more tur more circles. Draw a circle at coordinate 100, 0 of width 100. Make it a blue circle with a green fill. And heck, let's do another one. Draw a circle at 100, comma, 0 with radius, no, 100, comma, 100 of radius 50. Let's make it a black, uh, I don't know. Brown circle with an orange fill. Now we've drawn three circles. It moves. It draws another one. It draws another one. Hey, there's kind of a Mickey Mouse shape. If we had drawn the green one third, then you know it would cover up that second ear and it would look even more Mickey-ish. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make the green circle the last one that gets drawn. So I'm just cutting and pasting. You don't need to do that. All righty. There, Mickey Mouse with psychedelic ears or a flower or something with all the petals picked off. sure everybody gets that running. Then I'm going to describe the homework. The homework is going to be to draw a smiley face that looks something like this. You can make it look different if you want. But it's going to have two big circles and it's going to have a nose. And then it's going to have a series of uh, circles as a mouth. Looks kind of scary. It looks like it's wearing a hockey mask. It's the uh, you know, Friday the 13th 
Jason Smiley. You can make it look different if you want, but you know, I want it to be about that complex. All right, who's got the typos that they need help me? I know there's a few in the back of the room. I'm going to hear some C. Sorry to watch you over your shoulder. I'm going to make you nervous. Every time we define a function, we have to not space it. These need to be t dots, not t equals. creating variables for calling functions. Draw circle takes four, five are given. We need one more here called four as we're passing five arguments in. There we go. Okay. It didn't seem to fill it. So why don't we add the draw rectangle class? 
it's going to be the same idea. It's going to relocate. It's going to set the color. It's going to begin the fill. It's going to be in the fill. But instead of calling t.circle, we're going to have to issue four commands. More than four commands. That's the problem with drawing rectangles, is that there's no one turtle command that'll do it. Maybe we could split that up into two functions. One to actually do the drawing, and then the, one, then the other one to do the rest of the stuff. So I'm going to make a function called rect that takes a height and a width. It goes t forward h pixels. I'm typing t.fd to make it easier to type than t.forward. Then it's going to turn left. And it's just going to do all that four more times. Three more times. T dot forward. H number. No, this time it's going width number of pixels. It's made a left turn and now it's doing the width. And then T dot left again. And T dot forward. H. T dot left again. And T dot forward. Width. And T dot left again. Now we're going to make a draw rect function, which does everything that draw circle does, except instead of calling t.circle, it's going to call rect. So we're making functions that call functions, and that's totally cool. So I'm just going to copy the draw circle function. That's going to speed things up an awful lot. I'm going to copy the draw circle function. I just highlighted all the text and hit Control C or, you know, however you like to copy. And I'm going to change its name to draw rect. So change that line. Don't have to add my comments. I'm just noting which changes I've made. And then instead of calling t.circle, I'm going to call rect. Oh, we can't use r. Okay, we're going to change this to draw square. I don't feel like passing in two new parameters. And so R is just going to be the, the length of the side. Do you see why I did that? What I'd really have to do in order to make it a draw rect would be to pass in a height and a width rather than a radius here. And that would make the changes a little bit more complicated, so I didn't do it. I was kind of lazy. After we get this working, maybe we'll add a draw rect that uh, actually does pass in an H and a W. Now we got to go down to draw main and add a call to draw square. But first I'm just going to run it and make sure that I haven't got any typos here. Doesn't look like it, at least as far as that is the compiler knew. That means I didn't leave out anything obvious like a colon. Okay, to get all this to fit on one screen right above main, I'm don't do this. I'm just doing it to make it easier to follow along. I'm going to cut that code and paste it right above main so that you can see what we're adding to main. But that puts main too far down. Oh, well. I can take these spaces out, huh? That helps a little. I'm going to take out two of the draw circles as well. You don't have to do that. And then draw at position negative 100, 0, a square that is 100 per side. And I want it to be a green square with a blue fill.
Pardon me. You are so sure. You're, you're so correct. Don't type draw. There is no draw function. It's draw square. Thank you. Testing it. It blew up. Okay. That's because I called left without any angles. Everywhere we had t dot left, make it t dot left with 90 between the parentheses. Why do you have to do that? Because we're making right turns. And I apologize for making that error. All right, so now we have two functions. We can draw squares and we can draw circles. If you get this working, try on your own to make a draw rect method while I wander around and help with typos. You're going to have to change that R to an H and a W or something like that. Once we get draw rec done, you know, the possibilities are endless. We could draw houses and trucks and all sorts of kindergarten style pictures. But I think a face is enough. Oh. It's the exact same thing here, except it's just. Where you didn't make a backup copy or a oh, second uh, copy of draw circle. And then uh, try talking about this Oh, now we're not. Square is not going to call t dot circle. Instead, it's going to draw our uh, rectangle. So change that to rect parentheses r comma r. Drew two circles. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Cool deal. You got it rocking and rolling. So you. Well, we had a one called draw circle, and then we have one called draw square. Oh, okay. Um, it looks like we lost draw circle. We took the 
guts of it out and you lost it. So I'm going to just copy all of this and then undo our changes and then paste it. Okay. So what are you going to have to do to make a draw rectangle rather than a draw square? What's going to be an exact copy of this draw square method, except you're going to make it have two parameters where there's an R, so you're going to delete the R and make it height comma width, and then you're going to change your call to rectangle so that instead of R comma R, it's height comma width. Go ahead and take a stab at doing that yourself. Thank <laughs> you. 
simple. You know, after it's done drawing, you could call t.high. So like at the very bottom of main. You don't have to do this, but I'll go ahead and demo this up. At the very end of main, type before your return statement, type t.high, then it'll remove the turtle so that he's not left on the screen like a fly. I lied. All right, I'll create a Dropbox. I wish that hide turtle would work. Oh, it's turtle dot hide turtle. All right. So at the very bottom of main, I'm going to add one more command. You don't have to do it, but t dot hide turtle parentheses. Maybe that'll do what I'm hoping it's still do. Yeah, it removed the uh, the cursor. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do what I asked y'all to do which is either change draw square to be draw rectangle or add a new method. I'm going to add a new method. So I'm going to copy draw square, all of it. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to change its name to draw rect. I'm going to delete that R and make it H comma W. And then the call to rect is going to be H comma W. That's all I had to change is I changed the name I added an HW parameter rather than R, and then in my call to rect, change R to H, R comma R to H comma W. Change R to H comma W. So don't type in the whole method, obviously. Just copy and paste it. And most of y'all have already got it, so that's cool. And if not, no biggie. Notice that you could use the draw rect to erase part of the screen if you wanted to. Just set it to a white border with a white edge. You know, and then whatever it drew would erase whatever had been drawn before in that specific spot.
I'll be right there. Alright, if you refresh your Dropbox, there's a H under in class assignments. Yes, sir. I'll just stretch it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you're right. I didn't put it in the right place. Let me fix that. If you refresh your Dropbox, it'll be in the wrong place. Alrighty. Refresh it again, it'll be in the right place now. extent what we did here. Because if we can associate code with a graphic, I still need to register y'all with uh, lucid charts so you can draw your own flow charts. I covered up the code. I hope that's okay. Okay. Or get y'all using uh, the one that comes with Office whose name just escaped my mind. Vizio. Vizio, thank you. So somebody tell me, you know, where does our program start running? In reality, this one starts by creating the turtle, but then it goes down and it runs main, right? So tell me what the lines are in main. Like, what's the first line in main? So isn't it like draw a circle, first line in main? Yeah. Okay. So that's a function call. So instead of using a rectangle, a normal rectangle, I'm going to put uh, a rectangle with lines on here. So it's going to be draw rect and, you know, whatever we said, 100, 200. No, this is draw circle. 10, 20, you know, 30, comma, red, comma, blue. I'm not making it match exactly. Then we called what? Draw square? Yeah. Okay. Thirty comma forty comma ten. Comma. Whatever. Red, yellow. 
course, if you're flow charting your program, you ought to pretty much make them match. I just don't feel like switching between the two, and I know that everybody was making different circles and stuff anyways. Okay. And then lastly, we had a call to draw rect, which was almost the same as draw square, except it had an additional parameter in it. And different coordinates. Okay, I want to make my coordinates, my uh, flowchart match my drawing now. So I'm going to toggle back to my drawing, excuse me, my code, and look, compare. Okay, the first one I had was 0, 150, red, yellow. 0, 150, red, yellow. I can do that. 0, 100, 50, red, yellow. And that's boring and doesn't matter. I'm not going to fix the other ones. Okay. And then we have a return statement at the bottom. Even if we don't, I'm going to put one on our flowchart. You know, with all these parameters, this is kind of tedious. I'm getting kind of tired of drawing this flowchart. But I think I'm going to at least do draw circle. So the draw circle function takes a whole bunch of parameters. Draw circle. It takes a X position, a Y position, a radius, a color, and a fill color. What's the very first thing draw circle does? Somebody look at their code and tell me. It relocates. relocates, okay. So that's another function we wrote, so it has to be that symbol. Relocate to position X, Y. Then what's the next thing it does? Okay, so it calls a whole bunch of other functions. Yeah, T dot color color comma fill color after t dot color what does it do okay now since these are functions that we didn't write I'm not going to use this fancy symbol I'm just going to use a normal rectangle And I'm sorry, I was so busy thinking about that, I didn't, uh, okay, begin fill, right? Okay. T dot begin underscore fill. T dot circle. Yeah, I don't need to put them all on one line, but it sure would make it easier. circle with a radius of R and then T dot infill was there anything else or is it just a return after that okay and a return should be what shape John's the only one answering me it, yeah it should be an oval all right, now I'm going to zoom back out. And what I tend to do since, I have a, since I'm using a drawing program is uh, color code my function calls. So draw a circle. I'm going to come up here and pick some color for it. I'm going to make it yellow. The only reason I do that is to make it real easy. Okay, and then I could do draw square and draw rect. 
but instead I'm just going to do the relocate function. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to delete these guys. We're, we're simplifying this considerably because I don't want to take the rest of the class time just drawing a flowchart. So we're, I'm modifying my flowchart to be essentially what it was before we added draw square and draw rect. So now we have relocate. That's a function we wrote, so I'm going to color it. You don't have to colorize your flowcharts, but I think it makes them easy to follow. So now I need to write a function called relocate. So I'm going to use another oval. Relocate x, y. What's the first line of relocate? T dot pin up. And John, I wasn't yelling at you for answering that. I just want other people to pitch in. Okay. <laughs> and then set X, set X, then set Y. And then pin down, right? Oh, and uh, change heading, yeah. And why did I change the heading here? Because I want, I guess I didn't need to do that. But I didn't want you to have to worry when you drew a circle, you know, what direction you were going. And so just by assuming that uh, we're always pointed north, we kind of eliminate some confusion. And then we put our pin back down. And then we return. And in reality, our code called main as well. So I'm going to add one more row over here that's just start. And then a call to main. And then a stop. And the reason we're doing that uh, main business is because so many programming languages use that to indicate where the code starts. Python's a little bit unusual. Python doesn't declare a function called main or make you declare a function called main. But it's good programming practice because as you go on to program in other languages, you're going to see main in a lot of them, like uh, you know, in C++ or basic, uh, not basic, um, Java, things like that. Let's color code that. Okay. I can fit all this on the screen except for the return statement of this one thing. So let's do a little bit more shrinking. See if I can get everything on one on the screen with a font big enough to pretty much see. And what we'll probably wind up doing on Thursday is practicing flow charts. So I really need to get y'all set up on Lucidchart or I need to bite the, the bullet and start using Visio. Okay, so looking at this, oops, I forgot to color relocate. You can pretty much see how the program matches what we wrote. I hope you can. Right? Here's where we start. The only thing that uh, this isn't showing is the creation of the turtle. We could add that, you know, create turtle. You know, T is equal to uh, turtle dot turtle. That'd be a good thing to add here. Then we invoke main. So the code runs over here, 
it starts doing all this. Well, really all it does is call draw circle. When we first did ours, we called draw circle three times, but you know, in order to make this simple, I just put one call to draw circle. So draw circle starts, we pass in an X and a Y and a radius and a color and a fill color, and it calls our relocate function with the X and the Y coordinate. So it runs over here. You know, now we're three levels deep at least, and that's totally fine. And so the relocate function has an X and a Y parameter. These are variables that were filled in when we called it. These don't have to match, by the way. You know, when I passed in numbers, I didn't put an X and a Y and an R here. Instead, I put in numbers. R, yeah, I mean 0 and 150. The variable names don't have to match. When I called relocate, I could have made these different if I'd made them different there. So calls relocate, it set, picks the pin up, it sets the X position, it sets the Y position, it changes the heading to north, it puts the pin back down and returns. So then our execution comes back here. And it can set the color, it can begin the fill, it can draw the circle, it can end the fill, and then it returns, and so that comes back up here. And then it returns, and that comes here, and we're done. I'm going to add that t.turtle step. T is equal to new turtle, just for completeness. T is equal to turtle dot turtle. And we had to do that. Yeah, that's the problem with using global variables. Technically, that should go right below the call to main, above the call to main. So if I give you code, like what we typed in today, or if you write a program, you should be able to write a flowchart. If uh, I give you a flowchart, chart, you should be able to write the program that matches it. And the first thing you do when you write a program, and a lot of people don't do this because they, they can kind of visualize it in their head. But the first thing technically you ought to do is to figure out what your program is going to do, and that's to draw a flow chart, even if it's just a primitive one, to get the kind of the structure down. You think about how you're going to divide the problem up. And in this case, I didn't think about adding a relocate function until I wanted to add a draw rectangle to my draw circle function the last time I taught it. So, you know, when I originally conceptualized it, I only had, you know, this function and this function here. So my flowchart would have been wrong, you know, but that's okay. It's, it's a starting point. And then based on your flowchart, you might want to pseudocode it. And we talked about pseudocode. Pseudocode is when you write something in English rather than in a specific, you know, dialect, a specific computer language. And then armed with your flowchart and your pseudocode, you write your program. That's the, that's the full flow that you should follow when writing a program. A lot of people skip the flowchart. A lot of people skip the uh, skip the pseudocode. Sometimes I won't ask for the flowchart or the pseudocode, and so you can get away with skipping it. But you need to know how to do this stuff. So we're going to work on drawing flowcharts, and we're going to work on doing pseudocode. But hopefully, you can see the connection between what I have here and the program. Wouldn't it be kind of neat if you could just draw a flowchart, and then it would write the program for you? Well, there are some environments that try to do that, but, but they don't really, you can't write Excel or Word or, you know, or Call of Duty using a program like that. Does that make sense, y'all? For those who uh, bothered to, I didn't put you to sleep. Okay. So I think we've talked about functions two times. I want to go back and look at our draw spiral program and uh, remind myself what it did. Someone's totally at random. Don't be alarmed.
Oh, we already had a draw. That's why I thought. I, I guess I'd just gotten confused about what exactly we did. But we did have a draw rect function. So this is looking familiar. We created a turtle. We drew a rectangle. We had a draw square. How many squares in uh, spiral? Maybe that's not what we did. I'm going to grab someone else's. Oh, we were supposed to add some input. How many squares in our spiral? 16. And then we go back and we watch it draw. So that's what we did last time. Is that looking familiar? Okay, okay. So this had the same idea. We were writing procedures. Again, we had a draw rect, but it didn't do everything that the other the one we just wrote today did. It doesn't have any capacity for uh, setting the colors. It doesn't have a capacity for setting its position. So that's why this draw rec doesn't have an X and a Y and a pair of colors. And then draw square, all it needed to do was call draw rect and then pass in the length of the side twice. And then so this code here was just a fancy schmancy way of, of demonstrating the use of that function and that function. So we call draw square and then we turned left and then we call draw square again and we turned left and so on. So if we were going to flow chart this one, we would need a, uh, you know, a start and then we would need an input box, you know, and what's an input box look like? It's that uh, tilted rectangle, the polygram, the uh, parallelogram to get the input. And then there would be a for loop. I'm not going to draw the flow chart for a for loop right now. We'll get to that. And then it would invoke our draw square. So we'd have one of those rectangles with the double lines. Then we'd go over here and we would draw a draw square series of code. So the oval would say draw square. And really all it would do is call draw rectangle. So we'd have one of those rectangles with the uh, double vertical lines. And so over here we would need a draw rectangle oval. And it would issue all those calls, t dot left, forward, left, forward, left. And then it would have a return statement. And so it would draw square. All righty, guys, I ran out of uh, things to talk about. We have a whole four minutes left. Any questions? Okay, I'll create a Dropbox, and we'll make it due um, by Monday at midnight for your face. You know, and I'll put a picture of a face or whatever. And if you have trouble figuring out the coordinates of a face, just uh, go online and, you know, Google up graph paper and print out a sheet of graph paper, you know, so that you can figure out where you're going to put your coordinates. So I hope doing the turtles is a good way of visualizing these, these functions that we're writing. That's the real reason we're doing it, besides the fact that it's fun to draw things on the screen, is I'm hoping that it's more entertaining than just, you know, calculating weight and calculating volume and, you know, printing stuff out, which we're going to be doing as well. Hopefully the more visual way, you know, ties it all together. All right, guys, I will see you all on Thursday.